welcome to the shooting show. This week we return to the Emerald Isle with Jason Doyle in pursuit of a seeker stag on some virgin ground. Plus we bring you all the latest news from the shooting world. We're in for a treat today. We've had a new patch of land open, it's gates to us, literally. This is in Ireland, so naturally it's Jason Doyle who'll be heading in for the initial recce. A seeker stag is on the cards and he's selected a Browning 243 for the job. This is a beautiful part of the world and it's a privilege to be out stalking here. Time to see if Jason can get us a stag to go with the view. We're out this evening to try and get a seeker stag. This is a bit of private forestry and it's quite young, it's in thicket and the deer do a lot of damage here. So it's not an area we, we use for clients. It's not even one of my permissions. It's a friend of mine and he's invited me for the evening. But, um, he hasn't shot any deer in here yet this year. So this evening, if we see really any sort of stag, uh, young or old, we'll probably take him. It's more for to protect the forestry and for our own consumption. But um, we're not going to be too worried about it if it's a nice young stag. Um, I know best management practice would mean we'd leave it, but when it's um, crop protection for these trees, we'll, we'll probably take whatever we see. Um, so we've about, 45 minutes or an hour to go till dark. It's really just a place where we'll, we'll sit and watch a couple of a couple of clearings like this in front of us. Have a bit of a stock round maybe, but it's just right on the point where deer will be moving. We saw quite a nice a pointer as we drove up to the top here to get the wind right, so there's definitely deer in it. And um, we'll give it an hour and hopefully we'll get one. And we're off. As it happens, this is one of the luckiest stalks we've ever filmed. On an early glassing session a mile from the pickup, Jason spots a hind heading into cover. We stay put, hopeful that a stag will follow. Soon our suspicions are confirmed. Jason wastes no time in converting the opportunity. The stag drops into cover, but we can see it hasn't run on. Now that couldn't really work much better. We've still plenty of light left. And um, we just had a hind come out and cross the fence. Didn't get it on film, unfortunately. Um, but she just, she came out. We thought we'd actually spooked her. We thought she got her scent. She ran out pretty quick, jumped the fence and went into this gorse. And um, she went so fast, I wasn't sure if it wasn't a pricket. So we got we got ready with the on the sticks and just behind her the stag looks like a in the binoculars to me it looked like a seven or an eight. He just came out behind her and just stood on the edge and um I think the wind here was swirling because he looked spooky, he looked like he was onto us. But I managed a real quick neck shot just right under the chin as he looked at us. It's only 60, 65 yards. So um the way he went down it didn't look like the the spine was properly broken, he didn't hit the ground straight away, he sort of tumbled back. I've covered him for five or six minutes now and it's just starting to really get dark so I want to go down and um, pick him up straight away. We can actually still see him but I want to make sure he's dead before it gets dark just in case he, he does get up and, and tries to get into the trees. The stag may be down but Jason's work has only just begun as he heads into the shot location.
Happily, it looks like a textbook end to the stalk, as Jason confirms a clean kill, then makes safe ready for the Grelic. This is a truly memorable moment for the Irishman. Well, I, um, I get the chance to guide a lot of clients on stags and see a lot of stags being shot. But this is actually the first take of stag I've shot in maybe four seasons. Um, so I actually found it very exciting. He's an old boy, real old fella. Um, bad brow time here. Lovely mass. Um, this, this left side is really good. Right side, pretty weak, weak enough six. But um, big, big body, big heavy stag. I'd say his carcass weight is gonna be getting on for probably 50 kilos. Um, shot was perfect, right in under the chin. Uh, no exit with the with the 76 grain gecko in 243. Um, I really wouldn't like to body shoot a stag this size um, with that light bullet, especially in the rut. Seeker notoriously strong, but at 60, 65 yards, nice to place next shot. Put him down on the spot. With the light fading fast, Jason sets about performing a swift and professional grelic. Last time we filmed a seeker stalk with him, Jason was forced into a five mile pack out, and we think that's playing on his mind as he prepares the carcass. Because we have to drag this guy and keep in the hole as small as possible in the stomach. It's quite dirty here where we have to drag up, there's a lot of grass, a lot of gorse. A lot of thistles and things so even though it's easier to work with a bigger hole bigger incision i'm just keeping this one just as big as i need um, and then when we get back to the car we'll open it up more to aid cooling a few minutes later jason's finished and just in time because there's no filming light left switching on the ir we await another grueling pack out but jason's got a trick up his sleeve that will spare him the exertion A lot of people use harnesses now to drag, and I do use them on um, on flat ground. But I find with a big animal like this and on rough ground, if you drag using your arms, your arms work as a shock absorber and you won't damage your knees or your back as easily. If you're strapped onto a big stag like this that is gonna be 55 plus kilos and he snags in something and you're pulling hard, it puts a lot of pressure on your lower back. So um, just old fashioned rope around his head. And I'm gonna use my Viper Flex Journey um, I've used these sticks several times for dragging, they're unbelievably strong. So rather than trying to carry them and drag the stag, I'm just going to loop the rope around the sticks and um, pull them up the hill quite easily. Jason should make light work of this drag, even if it is uphill and in the dark. Soon enough, he makes it back. Well, that's the end of a cracking evening. Everything went well, couldn't really have been easier. We hadn't gone that far when we, when we got this fella. But a uh, nice stag to take. As I said, first stag I've shot in, in many years. And a uh, good one to take. Um, not a particularly fantastic trophy. Probably wouldn't have got any better. He's pretty strong on one side but weak on the other but my kit again worked perfectly it's actually the first stag I've shot or the first deer I've shot with the gecko 76 gram bullets so it was a good test for them and that was the main purpose of this evening really for me was to try the bullets out and um, it's also my first time using the sports match mounts and um, I zeroed this rifle this is my test rifle I'd zeroed it with the mounts and tried some different ammunition <laughs> But um, everything's working fine, mounts are good. Swarovski optics again were fantastic, the binoculars and the scope. And um, no, great evening, really enjoyed it. A uh, little bit of book fever, which is good to see I still get it after all these years. But no, really enjoyed it now and looking forward to getting out again.
Jason having all the luck of the Irish there. And now, the shooting show news. This is the shooting show news. The big debate on grouse shooting kicks off tomorrow. On Tuesday, the government's petitions committee will take evidence for an hour to inform MPs all about grouse shooting. The Countryside Association's Liam Stokes will be there, but so will Mark Avery, so expect fireworks. Then there will be a longer debate on the subject on the last day of this month. We'll bring you all the updates on this burning issue. New government guidelines will crack down on animal rights protesters harassing people involved in legitimate field sports. Now, those who encourage others to participate in harassment campaigns, especially online, can be charged under the Serious Crimes Act. There have been a number of high-profile cases recently where Hunt supporters' personal details were posted online. The Countryside Alliance's Tim Bonner said the new law would close down online harassment. The government has applauded the conservation work carried out by shooters. Responding to a pro-shooting petition, a DEFRA spokesperson said they welcomed the proactive approach taken by gamekeeping organisations and highlighted Basque's Green Shoots programme for praise. Basque chairman Peter Glenser said Green Shoots was an example of how shooting provides a sustainable and mutually beneficial relationship with conservation. And finally, pest control will continue as normal in Northern Ireland. The general licence has been renewed for another year, with no changes. This means the control of pigeons, crows, magpies, jackdaws and other pest birds by shooting and other means can continue as before. Shooters now await the renewal of the general licences in England, Scotland and Wales. If you're into pest control, make sure you get Airgun Shooter magazine every month. That was the Shooting Show News. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you. This has been The Shooting Show.